In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new Pro Mini PC that has enough power to basically play any AAA game on the market. And this thing is coming in at a very small form factor. And all this performance really comes down to the APU they opted to use here because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9 365. This is the B-Link SER9 Pro 365. And a few months ago on the channel, we took a look at the higher end variant, the HX370. I really wanted to get my hands on this one because it is coming in with a lower price tag out of the box. And externally, not a lot has changed, but B-Link has really stepped up their game when it comes to the design of their mini PCs in the last couple of years. I've really been liking a lot of the minis that they've been putting out on the market. And this one is almost completely constructed of aluminum, except for the rear and the bottom. In this video, I've got a lot to go over. I've got a lot to test with this thing. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Inside of the box, what we're going to get here, obviously, is the mini PC itself. We also have an HDMI cable and our 120 watt small form factor power supply. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a full size USB 3.2 port. We've also got USB type C and both of these ports up front are 10 gig ports. It also has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack up front. And you might notice these four pin holes. This is actually for the quad microphone array they have built in. Moving around back, we've got another full-size USB 3.2 port, USB 2.0, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, DisplayPort 1.4, so this will do up to 4K 240 out of that, another USB 2.0 port, full-size HDMI port, 4K 240 on that one also, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 4 that's capable of running at up to 40 gigs, so you can connect an eGPU, and of course, we've got our power input. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals and it's pretty easy to get in here. We've got four screws on this bottom panel. We can go ahead and pull that off. You might notice this actually has dual speakers built in. So these can get pretty loud and they put out a little bit of bass. This is really just in case your monitor doesn't support speakers like a lot of the higher end monitors on the market today. And I've already removed all of the screws for easy access. But once we move that dust plate and speakers out of the way, you can see that there's no RAM because it's actually on board. It's using really fast 8000 megahertz RAM. And we can do up to a total of eight terabytes. So four terabytes per M.2 SSD. It uses dual 2280 drives. And when it comes to the overall specs here, like I mentioned, this is utilizing the new AMD Ryzen AI9 365. It's based on Zen 5. We've got 10 cores, 20 threads, a base clock of two gigahertz with a boost up to 5.0. The iGPU is actually based on RDNA 3.5, it's known as the 880M, and with this we get 12 compute units that'll clock up to 2900 MHz. This unit out of the box has 32GB of LP DDR5X running at 8000 MHz. We can add up to 8TB of storage with those dual 2280 M.2 SSDs. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11. Okay, so first things first, wanted to give you a look at the BIOS here. I've already booted this thing up. I've taken a look at Windows, and one thing I noticed was the RAM is actually running at 8,000. And with the stock settings, so uh, just to give you an idea, we'll restore the defaults. But from advanced, we've got everything that we need here, even some AMD overclocking. AMD CBS. if we go to our NBIO options, we can change the VRAM amount. Out of the box, it's at 4 gigs. I'm going to leave it right here. Another thing was that AMD overclocking. So this is pretty cool. And if anybody's interested in seeing a future video on this, let me know because what we can do here is actually go to advanced, GPU boost override. And I believe most of the time, yeah, 200 megahertz. So we can do a little bit of overclock over there. Uh, CPU boost override. So we can do overclocking. And I want to make sure that this is all, well, we'll reset them. Uh, GFX curve optimizer. 
So there is a little bit of overclocking that we can do with this. Now, I do want to mention that B-Link does not recommend it, but it's here in the bio, so we could definitely get a little more out of this machine. Hardware monitor, we can actually adjust the fan speed. It's in automatic mode. You can go to full on, PWM, manual only. Personally, I like seeing a BIOS like this. That way, if you really want to get down to it, you can. And again, let's restore those defaults just to make sure I didn't mess anything up. And we'll get right in the windows. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI 9 365 with the Radeon 880M based on RDNA 3.5, 10 cores, 20 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. And out of the box, these are usually running at 7,500. It's actually at 8,000. And I didn't touch anything from the BIOS. I did go back and look just to see if we could get a little more out of this. Uh, usually we'd be able to overclock from 75 to 8,000, but it's already maxed out here, which will help us with the iGPU performance. We've also got the AMD NPU and of course the 880M. Four gigs of VRAM dedicated from the BIOS. I could take it up to eight, but since I'm working with a 32 gig system, I'm going to leave it just like this. And as for TDP, what I've got here is CPU-Z. We'll just run a stress test. Zoom in a bit, right down here, this jumps up to around 54 watts. But that's not all of it because there is a little bit of a boost when we put a load on the iGPU. So this thing is actually peaking out around 64 watts while gaming. And when it comes to these Ryzen AI APUs, I mean, they definitely put down some good power. If you're gonna be using this as an everyday PC, you're gonna be able to get your work done, spreadsheets, check an email, web browsing, 4K video playback. This thing will even handle video editing and photo editing just fine with this APU. First thing I wanted to do is show you some benchmarks that I ran here, and we've got Geekbench 6, single core, looking real strong with a 2,747, multi 12,862. Now I kind of wanted to face this off against something like the 8845HS, because last generation of these mini PCs, you know, the higher end ones were powered by this chip. And the 8845HS is an 8 core 16 thread part. I also ran it at a 65 watt TDP, single core 2,210, multi 11,134. Moving over to some iGPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid. On the 365, we scored a 35,732. And over on the 8845HS, which is actually using the 780M, 3,501. And the final one we have here is Time Spy. On this Ryzen AI, we're over 4,000, so we've broken that 4,000 barrier mark. And on the 8845HS with that 780M iGPU, we're sitting at around 3,348. And this is one of the higher scores that I got out of that chip. So yeah, this iGPU, given that we've got the same amount of compute units, is giving us better performance, and it comes down to two things. We do have a newer architecture, RDNA 3.5, but I think what's really kind of given us that boost is the much faster 8000 megahertz RAM. Now I wanted to test out some real world gaming and the first one we have is Cyberpunk 2077. I went through and tested this in two different ways. So the first one here is just 1080p. We've got that medium preset which automatically takes FSR to auto. We're so close to getting 60 FPS out of this and I'm really impressed by the Radeon 880M, but we're really only seeing an average of 56. It's right there on the edge. You could take FSR all the way down to performance and get around 68 FPS out of it. Or we could enable frame gen. So I'm still using the same settings, 1080p, medium. I just turn FSR 3 frame gen on and now we're seeing an average of around 97 FPS. So it's a major jump here, and I do understand that there's people out there that don't like frame gen, they don't like fake frames, but when you're working with an iGPU, this is technology that we can definitely utilize to get smoother frame rates out of our games on these things. All nearby units, we got a situation in Watson. Next one I wanted to test was Spider-Man 2, and I know on the launch of this, uh, I personally did have a couple crashes on a few of my systems, but with the updates they've been putting out, it has been getting a bit smoother. With the Ryzen AI 9 365 and that Radeon 880M, I'm at 1080p medium with frame gen on, and this is really smooth. I mean, I could play through this game as long as it doesn't crash because of an issue with the game itself. I'm seeing averages of around 67 FPS on an iGPU with this game. Skyrim Special Edition 1080p Ultra. And if you take a look up in the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. 
we're at 58 FPS. And one thing I've noticed with the newer driver update for these Ryzen AI chips is this game and Fallout 4 kind of stick right there at 58. So it's able to run it at full speed. It's just something going on here that's not letting us hit that full 60. I've gone through and checked the refresh rate on Fallout 4 and this. This is something I've noticed for the past couple of weeks. And you knew it was coming, Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium, we're over 120 FPS on average. And yeah, we are hitting 65 watts, as you can see up in the top left hand corner with Afterburner. And right now we're not using any FSR or anything like that. This is a true 1080p medium settings with this game on an iGPU. This does run amazingly on these new RDNA 3.5 chips, even on the Radeon A80M, as you can see here at low with frame gen on 1080p, we're seeing averages over 90 FPS. And of course we are generating some extra frames here. If we wanted to not use frame gen on this, we can run it at 60, but we'll have to take it down to low 900p with FSR set to balance. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. When it comes to CPU temps, this is using B-Link's new MSC 2.0 cooling system. It's actually pretty quiet here, even at that 65 watt TDP. And with the stock fan curve, remember we can change this if you want to ramp it up a bit. Average gaming temps, 73 degrees Celsius. And the maximum that I saw this hit was 81. So we were nowhere near thermal throttle with this unit. And another thing I always like to test with these mini PCs is total system power consumption because energy can cost a lot more in other parts of the world. So what I use is a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall. At idle, this is pulling 9.8 watts in performance mode. You can actually take this down and it'll only pull around 4.8 in silent mode. Average gaming jumps up to around 72 watts and the maximum I saw this pull from the wall while maxing out all 10 cores, 20 threads and that 880M iGPU was 91 watts. That's kind of an extreme use case scenario. This does come with a 120 watt power supply so we're under that and while gaming even pulling over 70 watts from the wall this thing did stay relatively quiet. It doesn't ramp up and sound like a jet engine. Their new cooling system does a great job with the Ryzen AI9 365. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in seeing how this thing performs with a little bit of an overclock in the iGPU and CPU, let me know in the comments below. Another thing I'd like to install here is Linux because I know we're going to see some great performance over there. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the new B-Link SER9 Pro 365, I will leave some links in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.